hello, 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 my Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your Path of True Love reading for eh, December-ish 2019. I'm finding my readings are becoming more and more timeless as I watch more and more videos. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like timeless whenever you're supposed to watch it. It's when you're supposed to watch it, but I'm a Virgo. I've got to keep it chronological for my own sense of sanity. <laughs> I am your reader. Mark Angelo Lyons Mal, for short, president of Drawing the Circle Productions. It's 1998. Uh, spiritual events production. I'm a YouTuber now. Go figure. There's uh, the Divine Path with its twists, turns, and surprises for you. Uh, professional, intuitive, professional witch. I'm really, really honored and happy to be doing this work for you all today from my dining room table. Kind of kicks ass, actually. Uh, cold day here on Long Island, all rainy and shit. I went out, ran my errands, put on my hat to go out, came back, looked in the mirror, said, we're keeping that on. I hope you like it. <laughs> It's okay if you don't. Uh, a couple of things before we get down to business. Uh, number one, this is a general read. That's why I always do Sun, Moon, Rising minimum when I do a zodiacal read, uh, Aries through Pisces, throwing in occasionally, uh, you know, Venus for relationships, Mercury for Mercury retrograde, Mars for sex, Jupiter for money. But what is, the further you go out in the planets, the more generational they are. They're not so personal. Planets closer to the sun are called personal planets. They move faster, so you get a little bit more variety there. That being said, don't try and make the reading fit if it doesn't fit. That's why I do Sun, Moon, Rising, in this case, Venus, so that you can check your other uh, signs and get little pieces of information, particularly Path of True Love is a mystical path. It's You're never going to know exactly how it's going to go. Oh, you can have the experiences you want to have, just usually not in the way you expect them to unfold, but you can have the emotions you think those experiences would give you if you know how to play your cards Right, cool. So uh, so don't make it fit. If it doesn't fit, go with what resonates, how it feels in your body. Don't overthink it. I know you're an air sign. I have Venus and Mercury conjunct in Libra. So I'm right there with you. I understand. I can overthink the romantic sexual, which let's be clear, Path of True Love isn't all about romance and sexual intimate relationships. It's, a, it's your path. It's about your spiritual path, your healing path, your path of maturity, your hero's journey, whatever you want to call it through the divine plan of your relationships. In other words, every relationship in your life from reason, season, lifetime, family, lover, ex, what have you, coworker, boss, <coughs> political official you can't stand, all of them <coughs> are part of the path of true love for you so that you learn to grow, heal, and become the true love that you truly are at your core, fifth dimensional consciousness, unconditional love, call it whatever you want. But then it's using the relationships on your path in a healthy way so that you uh, grow and evolve and become the best that you can be according to the divine plan, which you ultimately can't fuck up. But knowing sort of what the rules are, because the rules have changed uh, in our spiritual evolution. So, uh, yeah, save some time, play the game and enjoy the game of life and the path of true love. Do your best, right? Cool, cool. Anything else? This is a general read. Oh, all the decks that I'm reading are in the description box all the way at the bottom, but as you scroll down, you'll see my two ebooks. You'll see a couple of videos that I've done, one that Matt Kahn, spiritual teacher, has done on soul contracts. I highly recommend you check those out. He's very entertaining. Um, I'm just more of a potty mouth than he is, but I adore him. Never met him. Seems like a nice guy. His work has helped me out a lot. And as a spiritual teacher, which is what I really am and have been for decades, I've always read, I've always read clients, but like my main thing has always been like on stage talking to groups of people, Leo rising. Uh, but that's what a spiritual teacher does. Something comes down the pike that works for them, they pass it on. If it doesn't work for me, I don't pass it on, right? So not everything suits everybody, like, like this reading may not suit everyone. Uh, but do have a look at the description box. Last thing then definitely is please be conscious of breathing. Particularly my air signs, keep yourself in balance. In balance, not im balance. Keep yourself in balance. Being aware of your breath, inhaling everything that you need, known or unknown on the inhale. Oh, waiting to inhale and then exhaling anything that's ready to go as well as sending those blessings of grace that you're in right it's like we breathe in grace and blessings we breathe out grace and blessings and when we do it intentionally you can really catch a buzz and it's free it just takes 
your attention and being in alignment with your breath, right? Like being present with your breath. I did it for a half hour last night. I mean, on and off. I mean, I found my mind wandering. Of course it does. You just bring the mind back. Uh, but oh my good God, not only was I buzzed, like oxygenated buzzed, um, but like a lot of insights and clarity started coming to me afterwards. It, it was really quite astounding. And I knew that. It's just like last night my guides were like, all right, sit on the couch, breathe for 30 minutes, watch the clock, got up, peed, you know, did other things. But uh, so I've been giving myself some breath breaks. Cool, cool. You with me? Please breathe. Let's get down to biz. Ah, here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, please. One Caroline Mace archetype card to represent the Libra collective sun, moon, rising, Venus. I'm watching this video. Please, what is the dominant archetype that they will be working with, bringing the shadow of that archetype into light on the path of true love? What is the soul power that they are alchemizing from lead to gold on the path of true love for this December 2019, yet timeless uh, period on the path of true love? Please, one card to clarify. I feel you, bottom card of this mini pack. The artist, bellissimo, bellissima. Uh, for, for the Libra, right? Because you're all about balance, right? And... Uh, not just synchronicity, but symmetry, right? It's like you like that that symmetry, that perfect uh, balance of things. Very powerful archetype. Well, all of them are. They're all about power. Um, but the artist is definitely part of the creative family of archetype you could, uh, of archetypes. You could even say it's sort of like the major arcana, right? There's like the goddess or the mother card would be the major arcana of uh, the feminine family. The artist is really kick-ass, and I have come across so many clients uh, throughout the decades who have what I call a hidden artist archetype. Like, they don't think of themselves as artists, and therefore their creativity, like, they don't own it, and yet they can do things that I can't do. Um, Oh, I've said this forever, like my mom, she was a nursery school teacher, so we were raised with arts and crafts, that was obvious. But what she can do with a table setting, like, it's astounding what she can do with it. She's Cancerian, um, figures. So and you could give me the exact same table, the exact same, you know, stuff and a map and a compass, and I still couldn't make it look as good as her because she is a visual artist. I am verbal. I am throat chakra, right? So we all have our different forms. So if you don't identify yourself as an artist just because you don't produce, right? Like so much is of art for so long has been about, well, what's the product? Is it is it sellable? Is it marketable? But there are so many different forms of artistry, just like there are so many different forms of healing, like listening is a form of healing. So keep that in mind. I'm going to read the the shadow and the light. The shadow you may relate to, maybe not. It's it's definitely in the archetype itself. Um, but also know that if this isn't you, then you are dealing with an artist archetype on the path. Either someone else or the situation that's sort of bringing out, or you're in an artist setting somehow. So the thing about archetypes, if you go too on the nose, you miss the meaning entirely. I think that's true with divination and tarot in particular, if you go too on the nose, you miss the deeper meaning of what's probably more accurate, right? So you've got to like feel out that thing more than just think it out. Um, but just play along with it, right? So here, here's the shadow and the light. <coughs> <coughs> Last little bit of this head cold and uh, quit smoking. So a little detox going on. Shadow attribute. Using talent as an excuse to mistreat others. Artists throughout time. Right? Womanizing, manizing, right? you know, just abusing family members, stealing money, you know, just all sorts of crazy shit. Second part of that, posing as the starving artist to elicit pity. Now, if you are actually a starving artist, then you're not posing. But if you're trying to elicit pity to manipulate people, that's in the shadow. So watch it. Keep an eye on that. Be aware of others, if there are any starving artists in your energy field, right? Keep an eye out for that, too. Might be a mirror, might be both doing the same thing, or might be this is represented, uh, representing that person. 
the light attribute, expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspire, uh, inspiring others to see life symbolically, right? So paint, dance, um, uh, certainly anything in the performing arts in terms of acting, right? Uh, storytelling, writing, on and on and on and on, in order to inspire people to see life symbolically, that we're all moving through stories, we're all, because in truth we are characters in the divine comedy. I, I'm not the first person to use those words, obviously. It feels like a divine tragedy, but the comedy is, is that the hero, the protagonist, always survives because none of us die. We are souls that incarnate our chosen cast to play the roles that we're in, which is our personalities, our names, right, our genetic heritage. And we came in to transform this world first by transform first, as though there was an order of difficulty. It's all the same thing. As we transform ourselves on the path of true love, our spiritual path, our healing, it affects the quantum. We're clearing it for everybody in holographic fifth dimensional reality. Cool? So, you know, really take that uh, uh, of the way that you can inspire people through your creativity, even if it's through food. Because, I mean, I know people who can cook in a way that, yes, of course, is gorgeous, but that it's their process of going through it. It's very creative. It's very soul-given. So in a way, it's sort of like holy food, blessed food. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to take uh, the Chuck Spazano love, uh, love pack, baby love pack. I can't stop saying that now. Uh, we're going to take one half of the deck, which is the luck, the um, healing, and the grace suit uh, for the, the gold. We're going to clarify the, the light attribute with that deck. And we're going to use the problem deck, the womp womp deck, the Debbie Downer deck for the lead. In fact, let's get Debbie out of the way, shall we? Brenda, please breathe. Oh, my masters, please one card in clarity for the shadow attribute of this artist archetype concerning this Libra collective sun, moon, rising Venus sign on the path of true love for December-ish 2019, though timeless uh, defensiveness. Okay, so there's a defensiveness, a need to defend yourself. Now, if you're dealing with family, that totally makes sense. Artists don't always do so well at tribal tables. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Unless it's a tribe of artists, right? A little tribe of freaks. Tribe of outcasts, which I've spent a good chunk of my time in as a witch. As an artist myself, I went to the Boston Conservatory of Music, Dance, and Theatre for musical theater in the 80s. Don't be shocked, right? You shouldn't be. Um, but that's why I can tap and I have a brilliant command of accents and dialects. <laughs> I trained hard and then walked the fuck away from it, right? My spiritual calling called, right? But, you know, once you've been head, once you've been hit in the head with the rubber chicken, once you've been nine foot tall Jesus on stilts, this is cake, right? <laughs> right. So that defensiveness, keep an eye on that. Like if you sort of got your dukes up, if you're like so identified with being an artist that everything else is just crap, right? Be aware of that. Uh, if you're then using that as an excuse to mistreat others, right? Because you're an artist. You're an artist. I can't do that. That's a little too, I don't know, right? Been there, done that. Shaved it off and started over. Uh, let's look at the gold here, my Libras. My masters, please, one card to clarify the light attribute, the gold in this alchemical process uh, for this artist archetype, Libra collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Communication, all right, would make sense, right? That the artist wants to communicate, expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses. Do you know what I mean by that? Just beyond the five senses. Like um, when an actor really gets lost in their role and even though it's not written in the words, you can see their pain. No, they're an actor, right? But you, they've forgotten their acting. You forget their acting. And suddenly there is this resonance, this empathy with the character, even though it's not really happening to them, right? It's, it's truly fifth dimensional, holographic in that sense. It's what? Beyond the five senses which are tuned to the third dimension. Some more than others to other dimensions. Just saying. Said the clairvoyant, clairaudient empath. 
Uh, guess what we're going to do now? Now that we've got that communication thing going on there, right? You expressing yourself, but with defensiveness, finding the balance there. We're going to get three Daughters of the Moon Tarot to give you past, present, future, where you've been, where you are, and where you're going on the path of true love. And then we are going to use the Mythic Tarot, Juliet Sherman Burke, to uh, clarify. So we're literally getting the voice of the goddess and the voice of the god, right? Divine, feminine, divine, masculine, but your own, right? When anybody else is in this. Though if chord cards pop up, we'll address it. We'll tune to it. Please breathe. Oh, I swear I live for those breaths in between. Oh, my goddesses, please. One card in clarity. Where has this Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign been on the path, true, path of true love? Face down. My goddesses, please. Where is this Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign artist archetype right now on the path of true love? Present moment. And my goddesses, of course, please. One card in clarity. Where is this... Libra Collective, whoopsie, shoot the cards across the table. My goddesses, please, one card in clarity. Where is this Libra Collective sign? Wow, rising Venus sign. Wow, you're jumping all over the place. Artist archetype headed on the path of true love. Where are they headed? Where are they headed? Where are they headed on the path of true love? Makes sense. Okay. They're all face down. Okay, I cheated on the last one. Get over it, Brenda. Uh, where have you been? Six of Cups, compassion. Brilliant. All right. Brilliant. Healing yourself, being compassionate, being empathic. Six of Cups, all about that harmony and what? Balance. It's a six. Emotional balance. Emotional give and take. Now, of course, there are other people indicated in this card. So remember what I said about like being at a tribal table? If you have your group of people who get you as an artist, there's real support that you're coming from there. Don't forget that. Because if your dukes are up, uh, be, and having to do with your creativity, right? Like having to prove it, have to defend it. It's like, well, have you made any money yet? It's like, it's my creative process. I know the feeling. Trust me, I know the feeling. Uh, whatever that is, right? If, if, if that's the deal here and you're trying to communicate yourself as clearly as possible, just remember that, that there are others out there who understand. And if this is in the past, certainly it would make sense that you know that this is uh, available to you. And even if you're not in connection, because for some of you, you're not really in connection with a lot of people, know that that is possible and we'll come around again and we'll see what else. Because remember, Path of True Love can be about friends, right? It's, it's about relationships. And really, my friends have saved my ass more than any lover ever fucking did. In fact, it was the friends who often pulled my shit out of the fire when it came to the lovers. And sometimes family, by the way. Uh, so where are you now on the path? <laughs> okay. The Hanged Man reversal. I love it in this deck. Uh, you really can't see, I'm sure, uh, but the, the reflection of her face in the water is one of tranquility, right? One of, oh, in a, in a way, a sense of um, spiritual awakening. And as I just even touched to this right now, it is about taking a pause, taking a time out, not so much the hermit, but to sacrifice the time, the space, your point of view, right? There's always something sacrificial about the hanged man, regardless of the form, because it's done voluntarily, right? Sacrificing your point of view, not necessarily saying, playing, all right, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, just shut up. But it's really about, let me see this differently, right? Hence, inverting yourself, turning yourself upside down. Um, see, don't crack up, bend your brain. See both sides. Throw off your mental chains. Who, who, who? I loved Howard Jones. One of his younger. He's tall. He's blonde. He's British. He's got nice teeth. Nice teeth and a gorgeous voice. What's not to love? Uh, but that is like what I what I consider that. It's like it's all right. I give up. Surrender, Dorothy. Right. Just let it all go. Let it go. Let it flow. Let the waters carry you to and fro. Uh, but but definitely that chill out period. So if there's not a lot of activity going on right now, heal, rest, 
you know, I've been given this image. Uh, Matt Kahn triggered it, but I've thought about it a lot since. It's like if you have any kind of surgery, okay, the worst is over. You've had the surgery, but then there's recuperation time, right? It's like you need to rest. You need to let your body heal. So if there has been this sort of emotionally balancing experience healing with or without other people, now let go, right? <laughs> chill, relax. If you need to pull back from people, do that, but it's not to get away from people so much as it is to change your perspective, which is why you can be traveling while this happens, right? So it's not so much about physical inactivity sometimes as it is about, you know, let me get out of town. I need to get some perspective, see things differently. Now, the sacrificial aspect is because of Odin hanging himself uh, upside down on the, the tree of life, Grassel for uh, nine days, right? <coughs> nine days, plucked out an eye, right? So that he could receive vision. And of course he got the runes from that. Uh, so it, it's sort of an exchange, but a sacrifice, making something sacred, particularly time, it feels like, uh, in this case, considering it's December and so much can be going on in December for the holiday seasons, um, to really take the time right, and perhaps let go of some things so that you can see them differently. Where you go with that then is Gemini, and that is the card that I peeked at, which made sense because of the card of communication. Third house, self-expression, right, groups of friends, fast communications, uh, the social butterfly, right? So, you know, as an artist on the path of true love, this actually feels really lovely. This lineage we've got here, this line of the past from Six of Cups, Compassion, the pres, the pres, I almost said the president, God forbid, the present uh, surrender, right? Uh, the hanged man chilling out, waiting on the will of heaven, uh, seeing things differently. And then this Gemini in the future, that really certainly fast movement of thought, at least mutable air, but perhaps some communication and some social butterflies, sort of getting out, going from flower to flower to flower, gathering information and experience, right? Could be fun. But now let's ask the gods to clarify, breathe. Same thing, my gods, please. One card, I'll do them face down, one card in clarity uh, for this. Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, Artist, Archetype, On the Path of True Love for December-ish, Timeless 2019. Please clarify this Six of Cups, where they have been on the path of true love. The Sun, right? So we're looking at a happy time. We are looking at a recharge. We are looking at a healing. Um, the thing about Apollo, who's depicted in this card, obviously being the card of the Sun, he's also the god of healing. So a really, really lovely, lovely, warm, sunny thing that you're coming from here, which may well have been a creative experience, right? But one that balanced your scales, either in collaboration with others. Uh, but remember, if we can take it, if we can take that creativity out of performance or visual art, then for that Libra artist, it is something then that really touched your soul and perhaps you're taking time to integrate this to then express it. Could be. Let's let's ask the gods, please. Where are they now? My gods, please. This Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun. Where are they now on the path of true love? Please clarify this card of reversal of the hanged man. Well, okay. Five of Pentacles. <coughs> now, <coughs> often seen as being left out in the cold, really, Five of Pentacles is about physical change. Yes, that you may have to physically shift from something different than uh, the Eight of Cups, the walking away, right? Going into the underworld in most cases. This is really about, okay, the gates are locked, that there's, that there's been a change, there's been a shift, and hence, you really needing to look at things differently. Look, there are times in our lives where we get blocked, right? Where shit changes. Sometimes it's an earthquake change, sometimes it's gradual, but everything is happening for us. See, that's the hard part. Everybody like wants to be so spiritual and live in the fifth dimension and anchor it into the third and, you know, but it really is part of that. I don't see how you get around it. It's holographic reality. Everything is happening for you. Everything that happens, every person, place, thing, circumstance, no matter how hard and toxic it may appear, is serving the soul. The personality doesn't have to like it. 
No, you are certainly allowed to just like this fucking sucks because it what it might be doing is clearing you emotionally, right? And seeing a lot of emotion uh, going on here that you really get to express. It's like getting squeezed. Uh, something that's been in perhaps your family lineage, your own emotional baggage, getting that squeezed out of you. So this is an opportunity really to surrender your will to the divine and say, okay, well, this fucking sucks. Hate it. Hate it. Right? Uh, help me see this differently, which is really the prayer for a miracle in terms of course of miracles. I mean, you can ask for a miracle. That'll work. But it's like, help me see this differently. Let me sacrifice what is not true in my mind so that I can accept this is something that's happening for me rather than to me. It's here to help me, but I do not have to like it. I just need to endure it and live through it as wisely and as well as I can. So it is going with the flow, perhaps going with the flow of the river, even over some rocky rapids. Yeah. But out of this really comes this Gemini thing. I'm loving this so much. Considering my relationships with Geminis, it's a little odd. <laughs> Blessed be the Geminis. They need all the help they can get. All two of them. Please, my gods, please clarify uh, this Maiden of Blades. In uh, wh Where they're going for this Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Artist, Archetype. Where are they going on the path of true love relative to this Gemini card, this Maiden of Blades? All right, Two of Wands. Good. Good, good, good. So you're not out of the gate with a total destination unknown. You're actually going to sit and plan, right? That you, the, Deep in the cave there is uh, Chiron, the wounded healer, right? Who's also the hierophant in this deck, right? The spiritual healing, the internal process. So what have you learned? What have you healed from the past here with the sun? Such clarity, right? Nothing hidden, such clarity here that now because of that, certain gates have been closed to you and you kind of need to surrender that, to that and go, okay, well, uh, that's not working anymore, so I must be being guided into something because everything happens not for a reason for a divine plan purpose, and we rarely see it, and if we do, it's usually in retrospect. Might as well chill out, integrate this healing, because then you're going to move into this lovely phase of, well, now what do I want to do with this? And remember, this is about the path of true love. Though this may be some sort of artistic inspiration, it's still affecting and being worked through your relationships in your life. So considering that we've got quite a number of people in this card in the past, just saying, and Gemini, this can represent certainly another person. Uh, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, who cares? Uh, but one who is very third house, communication, self-expression, right? Can be a friend, can be a family member. In fact, I think third house Gemini is uh, like, you know, friends, right? It's, it's mutable air. It's a lot of air energy going around. So even like family members, but like cousins and stuff like that. So um, a lot of communication going on here, but with that two of wands, not so much indecision, but that creativity of, okay, well, do I want to say this? Do I want to do that? Where do I want to channel it? It's fire in your hands with no specific focus. That comes in the three, right? The waiting for the ships to come in once the intention is launched. Very exciting read. Very cool read. We've got three more cards down, though, but you got your past, present, future there. Don't worry. We'll do a review at the end. We're going to ask the angels, Dorian Virtue, healing with the angels oracle for an overview. Please breathe. So good. Oh, my angels, please. One card in clarity for this Libra Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign artist, archetype on the path of true love. Please, one, healing with the angels, oracle, an overview, a lens to see this whole thing through for the Venus Collective. Manifestation, so it's moving towards that. I mean, honestly, we're manifesting every second of our lives. You manifested your body in this quantum second. Good for you. You manifested this video, right? You hit click. If you really look at manifestation as a never-ending, ongoing process, I'm waiting to manifest. No, you're not. You just consciously manifested a breath, right? So put it in terms of a creative process. 
whether uh, the bread is still egg and water and dough and, and yeast and flour and salt and whatever else you're putting in there and still in its components, it's manifesting, right? Putting it together, putting it together, manifesting, putting it in the oven, manifesting, pull it out, let it cool, manifesting, cut that bitch up and eat it, manifesting, poop it out, manifesting, right? So if you see it as that ongoing thing, then as this artist thing, you can put down your dukes a little bit. You can be like, I don't need to be so defensive. It's all a work in process. The divine plan itself is a piece of divine art. You are the character, the soul, the witness self that comes in and out, takes it personally, then pulls back, plays it personally, takes it back very much. This deal. If you can use this to get into the transcendent and know you're not going to stay there forever, but whoop, balance it right back in by integrating it into form, uh, you, you will more enjoy this ride of manifestation because you came into this life to manifest. But it's not in your control either. There's a difference between free will and choice uh, and control. There's a difference between free will and control. Let's ask. The higher selves of all involved. Now, this includes mine too. Like I said, I am, uh, I have Venus and Libra. Breathe, please. The higher selves of all involved. One card in clarity for this Venus collective sun, moon, rising Venus sign. On the path of true love for December ish. <laughs> Yet timeless 2019. Please, one card in clarity for the Libras. Honesty is essential. This is all about communication. I love this card. <coughs> Honesty is essential. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. That this is all about your communication, about feeling defensive. Perhaps you don't want people to see you a certain way. So you are not speaking and communicating honestly. Now, let's be clear. It says right in it, to be a loving person, it's about the true love. It is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner, which means you don't cut people's heads off, right? You don't have a conversation with your dukes up. Someone triggers you, yeah, we all get triggered. We're all going to react and then later think of, oh, I really should have responded. That's fine. Also, that's why this is such a dominant card in this deck. And it is, oh, we, we also have the sun here. We have two uh, major arcana cards. I can't pick that up. It doesn't want to be picked up right now. Um, so to be honest, truth without compassion is brutality. I always come back to that. It's the, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Once I heard it, I never forgot it, right? Because I am a communicator. I am an artist of words. Uh, verbally written doesn't matter. I'm a speaker. I'm a throat chakra boy. So to, to and I, you know, when I see that Six of Cups compassion for myself, though, I did that in the underworld with my gods, right? So yeah, some doors are certainly closed to me right now, some of which I closed myself, uh, locked it, barred it, welded the fucker shut, unless they have the magic word to fucking open it again, uh, and, and really hanging out, going with, but now, of course, communication is starting to show up in my life, and I'm like, well, do I want to? I have to be as honest as I can to tell people, you know what, my dukes are up right now, and it's not about you, right? How's that for being honest? I'm working on it, but I'm going to communicate myself, and I'm, uh, yeah, my dukes are up. We don't have to talk about why. Unless we really want to talk about why, but let me be honest with you from jump. Um, if you're trying to screw with me, uh, well, aside in the way that I want to be screwed with, you know, it's, it's a sexual thing. Uh, but even family members, like, like if you're going to really go rooting around in my unconscious to find triggers to push, you'll find them right now. Because I'm a little raw. And if you can be compassionate, that's great. But if not, I'll be out on the back porch breathing, right? I love you. But gotta love me right now. Cool, cool. Get that. Be honest. Just be honest. Tell people shit. Tell people shit, but find a loving way to do it. Our last card down will be a journey of love oracle. I love this one. I'm glad I, I got very clear from my guides. You do not have to memorize the meanings of these cards because there's even though there's not a lot written on each one, really, two pages tops for any one card. Uh, the poetry, the words that they use are just so perfect. Such a great alignment of art and poetry and text in, in this uh 
Journey of Love Oracle. So just one, I feel like that's all that's ever needed for one reading is just one, because it does tend to summarize really well. So please breathe, my Libras. Oh, we're all in this together. So as we started with the collective pantheons, we will end with the collective pantheons. Oh, my angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher souls of all involved, please. One card in clarity, a journey of love card for this Venus collective sun, moon, rising Venus sign on the path of true love for December-ish yet timeless 2019. Contemplation. Yeah. Look, c come on. Contemplation with the five pentacles, right? It's like, shit's locked up. Go in. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say hermit time, right? Because social time is coming. I'm feeling that. You're going to get to pick and choose. But contemplation, all right? Card number 69, which I think speaks reams <laughs> of information. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's go to number 69. Contemplation, please breathe. How long is this one? This feels like a doozy. It's a little long, but probably worth it. Here we go. Contemplation. Within you, there is a question arising. When you get the question right, the answer will be self-evident. How's that for a reversal? When you get the question right, the answer will be self-evident. But you have to plunge your consciousness deep within to find the right question. <laughs> I keep referring to that uh, Hegman. Um, to articulate it clearly and understand what it is that you are really asking communication. The question within you is actually a divine gift of awakening. It is your future awakening self waiting to be found and calling to you too. Let the question arise through dreams, dance, meditation, sleep, yoga, time in nature, swimming in the ocean, bathing in an aromatherapy bath, or receiving a hot stone massage. Yes, 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 and fucking yes, sign me up. I'm going to Gurney's in January, come hell or high water. Um, where were we? Okay, the question holds within it the next unfolding petal of the lotus of your being. So this can very much be this two of flames, uh, what's coming, this, this two of wands, this thing of this questioning inside, well, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Do I want to put my energy into this or do I want to do that? And there is a meeting of your future self there who's already done it, right? Who's got the answer to that question. That's beautiful. This oracle brings you an invitation to enter into the mystery of your life. Get it? The mystery of your life. You're not supposed to know what's going to happen because it's a mystery. You follow clues and your being, right, into, into the mystery of your life and your being and to allow the biggest question you can summon to emerge from your heart and be expressed through love. Artist, artist, artist. Your question may emerge as a clear and shining or soft and yielding, a question with no words, only feeling, whatever truth emerges. Let that be your contemplation. In response to that question, the next step forward will unfold before you, revealed in a perfect clarity and in perfect timing. This oracle brings you a message from your own divine nature. Come, Sit with me and breathe. I want to ask you something. I want you to ask me something. Together, there is a conversation that we are to have now, and there will be beautiful accord between us that overflows into all of your relationships, bringing more understanding and peace. Here's the poem. Nice deep breath. Patterns break through the night in beams of light awakening. Memories of walking on sand, moments, waves replace, waiting for another passerby. Reflections, time to look outward, in, <laughs> to find those hidden spaces, residing alone, waiting for a twin soul, waiting for myself. Contemplation. Let's give you your overview. Say it with me. Magic clap! <coughs> 
<laughs> Excuse me. We start with the artist archetype, shadow attribute, using talent as an excuse to mistreat others, posing as the starving artist to elicit pity. And what clarifies that is the card of defensiveness, a problem of which with your dukes up, you are certainly inviting attack. Defensive status uh, stances do attract attack. Uh, in the light, expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life symbolically clarified with the card of communication that makes a lot of sense. So really finding a way for you to communicate with safe boundaries rather than being defensive. We've got a past, present, future here. The timeline of past, six of cups with the sun. Definitely you're coming out of a phase of healing. I hope part of you is still in it because it feels lovely. Emotional balance, perhaps giving to yourself after giving away so much to so many. But with that card of the sun, there is something solar. There is something divine masculine here. Not divine masculine embodied in a physical form, but divine masculine in terms of God, solar, healing, energy, perhaps even vision, because Apollo is also the god of prophecy, right? That you can't have vision without light. So there was something lovely there in the past coming from that into a place of reversal. The hangman with five of pentacles. Yes, you might have closed some doors on yourself. You might have said, I cannot go back into certain behaviors. I cannot interact with certain people, just like someone in recovery, whether in surgery or from a toxic situation or from drugs and alcohol, some sort of 12-step process recovery, a codependent, right? Can't go back there. So I'm just going to surrender to the will of the divine and go with the flow here so that I can sacrifice, you know, the toxins, that which no longer serves, um, and get some clarity, get some rest, get some peace here within myself. Uh, moving into the future, again, this card of Gemini, I feel like rapid communication, some rapid thought, some moving along very quickly, but with that two of wands, really getting clear about what it is that you want, not just what you want, why you want it, seeing in this card very clearly that uh, Jason of Jason and the Argonauts uh, just is standing right outside the cave where Chiron, the wounded healer, awaits. Will he go in and heal or will he continue on without? Uh, even if you want to see him as exiting that cave, does he want to go back to where he was or apply what he has learned moving forward? That feels more accurate considering uh, that Six of Cups in the past for you, but with that Gemini communication, and it does feel like there are other people involved, or at least one person who's really about self-expression or helping you express yourself. The angels are talking manifestation here, and an ongoing process of one, just like the creative process. You know, when it's just a lump of clay, it's still part of the manifestation process. When it's in the kiln baking, it's still a piece of art in the process of manifestation. And when it's finally whatever it is, the plate, the cup, the mug, the statue, uh, it is still part of the manifestation for everyone who will ever touch it, experience it, and using it. So they're definitely, you're manifesting, you're moving closer to the physical manifestations of that which you want on the path of true love. Um, but this phase is absolutely necessary. And what Honesty is essential, says uh, your higher self. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. And that might very well start with prefacing with people saying, look, my dukes have been up. I've been through a lot. I'm in a process of healing. If you're going to come for me, I may just excuse myself and walk away, go outside. Right? I may have to continue to walk away uh, from situations where I am triggered, at least in public, so that I can go within and allow that voice to be heard, that whatever is triggered needs to be loved. It doesn't always have to be heard and embraced in the moment that it gets triggered. I can breathe, I can move myself to a safer space where I can again do the hanged man deal, see this differently. Uh, but ultimately it's all for a larger contemplation, a conversation between self with lowercase s and uppercase L s, right? Ego to soul, your present self and your future self, your higher self, your, so many different ways to see that. But begin to let that contemplative question answer because it's not an intellectual process contemplation. It is a soul process that as an artist, you are quite literally learning how to express a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life uh, symbolically, including yourself. What 
a lovely read, my Libras. Look, on the path of true love, you guys are the lovers of the zodiac, right? Ruled by Venus. So is Taurus, but it's a different vibe. It's earth, not air. So you're bringing yourself into mental, emotional balance. So obvious and important here. And don't worry about the gates that have closed, particularly if you've closed the door on some people that are toxic. You might have your your walls up, defensiveness, it makes sense. I get it, I've done that myself. Um, it's not the dominant theme in my life right now, but I get that. So to maybe be a little picky choosy about who you communicate with, who you open yourself up to, but really do not exclude from the communication aspect of uh, the path of true love, that contemplation with something deeper, truer, more authentic within you, calling you forward on the path. May the Libra Collective be blessed with all that they need on the path of true love this December-ish 2019, or for the timeless watcher who is watching this whenever, be blessed with everything they need to heal, to grow, to learn, to become the best that they can be, and become the true love that they are destined to be in this lifetime for the well-being of all. And so it is. Please like and subscribe, follow along, hit the notification button, share it, everything that you can and feel like doing to help me get my work out there so that I can fulfill my role in the divine plan because we're all in this together. Holographic unity consciousness, right? I love you, my Libras. And as a Mercury conjunct Venus, Libra third house of all things, <laughs> I thank you so much for your time. But for now, wishing you hell. Fair, well, and blessed be.